So in case for some reason you needed extra proof that our president is a racist, fascist, Nazi dictator, he literally sent his fascist regime goons to my house to put a notice in my mailbox telling me that my grass was too long. Literally just because I'm half Mexican, because he's racist. I mean, my grass was too long. But I, I mean, there's no way that had anything to do with it. I mean, I tried writing him back and like I pretty much roasted him and told him that he's wrong and my grass is fine. Uh, but they didn't get back to me. So literally just because I fear for my life and I don't want to be ripped out of my bed in the middle of the night and, and thrown into a Nazi death camp over just my dumb yard, I literally had to go out and buy my own lawnmower with my own money. So today's video is gonna be a little bit different, I guess. Today, I'm gonna be reviewing a lawnmower. I cannot believe this is real life. This is Trump's America. I'm like literally shaking right now. Oh, good. Looks like it came with some pre-mixed fuel, so that's good. Oh God. I guess the fuel gauge comes separate. That's weird. Uh, some sort of cap. Right. I, I like how lightweight it is. I hope that's not some sort of indicator of it being low quality though. These things are always such a hassle to put together. Initial thoughts on the color scheme. It seems a little childish, if I'm being honest. And they kind of make getting it out of the package a little too hard, in my opinion. I guess this goes here. That was pretty easy. Okay, fuel gauge goes here. A little stupid. I don't know why they made it facing this way. That seems kind of wrong. No, that's how it is. Oh, that's cool. It's got a fuel holder right there. Oh, cool. All right. I'm pretty sure this fuel is pre-mixed or else they probably wouldn't have put it in the package if you still had to mix the oil with it. I'm just going to assume that it's pre-mixed. You always got to be careful. Don't fill it up too much. Otherwise, that's uh, bad. Oh, it took the whole bottle, huh? All right, give it a shot. All right, here we go. The size is pretty good, actually. Is it supposed to do that? I hope that's not a fuel leak. Oh, man, right out of the box, it's malfunctioning. Well, hold on, let's see if it's actually cutting. That is really not working well, huh? Could it maybe be that the blade is dull? Wow, literally no blade, huh? Nice. You get a better view. All right, um, is it, okay, it faces, okay. Where's the, I swear, if I look in that box and they don't even have the pieces to put the blade in there. Oh, wow, apparently it's actually a cleaning feature that you can lean it forward and all the, the fuel will pour out. There's literally nothing about putting the blade in there. This is honestly unbelievable. I can't, this, this is crazy. I don't know, I gotta call the manufacturer. Hey, it's me. I'm sorry, who? Uh, I uh, just bought a lawnmower. Remember? Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. What's the problem, sir? Um, I don't know. It just seems kind of little. Like, um, the it seems too small for uh, like to put a blade inside. I tried putting a blade in, it was too little. Got it. And you're not sure what the make or model is? Um, well, it's got green and blue on the top, and the side, the wheels are like yellow. Hello. Okay. Um, would you like me to send you to one of our locations so you can speak to a representative? For, like, for, uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, okay. I can do that. Um, let me find the. In Actually, hold on. Have you set it? Have you set it to Wombo? Where would I? Oh, no. I've had it set to M for Mini. Oh, okay. Go ahead and set that to Wombo for me. Oh, all right. Thanks. Bye. No problem. Bye.
you get a nice wide cut, a lot wider than I would have expected from the size of the thing. And with no blade too, modern technology is amazing. That's just crazy. But now I have some lawnmower blades I don't really know what to do with. You guys stick a lawnmower blade build yet? Sorry, I'm not. So now that we've got it perfectly straight, shout out Mike Pence. Now I'm gonna work on beveling this edge right here just by pounding it down. And when I do that, it should cause the blade to curve this way and that's gonna give me the curve that I want for the cleaver. Right, now for the big boy, the hog splitter. Hmm, there's definitely a reference I could make there that I really should not. A very political reference that I really should not make. Not because I'm scared to make it or anything, but because that would really be too much. I'm sure a lot of gun owners out there uh, can maybe guess what I'm thinking of. Anyways, the hog splitter. The hog splitter. <laughs> These giant cleavers are called hog splitters because I don't know if they still do, but they at least used to use them in slaughterhouses to split uh, carcasses in half. Pretty much it's just a ridiculously big cleaver. So I want to preserve as much weight as possible. So really the only thing that I'm gonna cut off is like right here, this little nub right here, because I don't want this to look 100% like a lawnmower blade. And why am I leaving this instead of just cutting it off? Like I said, I wanna preserve as much weight as possible. So just these two cuts right here. for the first time for whatever reason, finally got myself some magnets to hold on to the thing while I'm grinding the flat edges because it just gets hot so fast and you just have to keep quenching it like every five seconds. It's really annoying. Let's see how much this increases my productivity. Wow, I almost turned it on with it on top of it.
driving me crazy, man. So I've been grinding on this for, started at about 8.30, it's 12.30 now. And this is a freaking dot. I'm like really close, and then after I do this, I have to do this side. <laughs> and then after that, I gotta do this and this. So believe me guys, I'm having a lot of fun right now. And I, I guess I could use another belt. Maybe I'll take a break and go grab a few more belts. I smell awful right now. You ever get the metal shavings in your armpit and it creates that like special metal BO? I just wanna freaking scream at this thing right now. <gasps> ah. Ow, okay. That's what I get for unleashing my anger. Rip my earphones out on the table. Now they're all dirty. Truly I have sinned in my anger. I'll, I'll never overreact like that again. Sorry you guys had to see that. All right guys, heart to heart time. Whew, that is not a nice looking table. So I've gotten this thing looking pretty nice. Not even really as nice as you would be able to like sell in a store, but I've gotten it looking decent. And to get it to this point right here has already taken, you guys can tell how long it's taken, pretty much a week, about a week probably. Now for me to get this absolutely perfect and then to start work on this one, which is even bigger and rougher, and then to finish both of them, I would probably be finishing this video sometime, I don't know, maybe a week and a half from now. I don't wanna just do that cowardly thing where I kind of start doing something and then I decide that I don't wanna do all of the work and then I just go, oh wow, I like the rough look that that has right now. I just wanna be like honest with you guys. For the sake of time and time only, I'm gonna give this a rough finish, okay? But I promise at the very least, I'm gonna make the handle go with the rough look so that we still have maybe not a nice looking tool, but a very cool looking tool, okay? So even though this thing isn't absolutely pristine. This is gonna be even less pristine, but they're both gonna look nice, okay? So I wanna get to the tempering. It means I got to uh, get this a little slicker.
The other two cats are freaking pole dancing all over my tripod. You're not old enough for that. Stop. All right, you set this thing to 420 and then you blaze it. I don't really remember how long you do it for, and I'm sure it's different for every thickness of metal. Uh, all I know is that you uh, bake it until it's like a golden wheat color. I don't really see how I'm gonna fit the bigger one in here. I don't think I'll be able to. So maybe I'll just hit it with the blowtorch again, soften it up a little bit. All right, I got the groove cut out. Let's get some shaping done. With the vacuum.
test, test. Final sharpening, boy. These are with paper wheels. I don't really know what the point of making them paper is, but this is how you get razor sharp edges and fast. This is the secret. I haven't spun this up in a while, so I'll step out of the way. That's furious. All right, with these paper wheels, obviously you don't cut into them because that'll chop up the wheel. You go with it. Yuck. Yeah, I'm gonna skip that rough grit because I actually got this pretty good with the uh, belt sander. It's just kind of unnecessary. Getting a bunch of crap on it from this thing. I'm telling you though, that already made it pretty sharp. Now on this paper wheel right here is where you add the buffing compound. And I can't honestly remember how fine this is, but it's some sort of like extra, extra fine buffing compound. It's what I used on the uh, on the wrench karambit that I made a long time ago. And man, was that sharp. So we're just gonna jump straight ahead to that. And that's some nasty stuff. <laughs> that is looking pretty scary. Now this is like super unnecessary. I just kind of want you guys to see the chopping power of this. Because not only is it super sharp, but it's got so much weight behind it. And I'm predicting that these ribs are gonna go flying and land in the dirt and stuff. I'll wash them off and everything, but I'm only gonna do this one time because I still want to eat these. I'm not like, I'm not quite at that level where I can just throw away food like that, unless it's like a watermelon. Oh my gosh. I swung super hard because I thought that was gonna be like difficult. Nothing, dude. And I don't see where that half of them went. Oh, they're there. <laughs> A little messy. I'm gonna go rinse these off because I don't think this piece of wood was clean either. Man, that was like butter. Holy mackerel, that was really something, huh? It's gonna be one heck of a monster to edit, too. Thinking it's probably gonna take me the entire day tomorrow, but I'm trying to resist the urge to just like do it all tonight, edit till like 5 a.m. I've been on like a pretty strict schedule recently where I'm waking up at 6 a.m. and I'm already getting to work by like 8. I've like already worked out and everything like that, eating breakfast. It's honestly kind of saving my life right now, but gotta wake up at 6 though, so that's pretty intense. At least for me, I've been on not a schedule for like the longest time. But yeah, I super hope you guys enjoyed the video. I, I hope that it was a uh, satisfying return to classic ZNA. I know it was for me. This is honestly the first video in a long time that I've like super enjoyed working on. And it actually probably would have come out like a week earlier, except this one and the cleaver that you saw me make were actually the second and third cleavers that I built. This was, it was also the first time that I ever built an entire thing, edited the whole video, and then I didn't put it out because I literally just hated it. The video sucked, it wasn't funny, the build was a huge failure, and I could have just titled it like homemade kitchen cleaver 
Cleaver fail or something like that. But I'm trying to hold myself to some higher standards right now. I know you guys have a very refined palette, and uh, I, I hope this video was enough to satisfy you. Thank you guys so much for the help with the belt sander. And yeah, I think I'm gonna have the new regular Z Knot logo edited by the time I post this. So yeah, go ahead and check that out. Some cool hoodies and shirts. I'm gonna do some tank tops too, so you can get those guns out. But I think that's just about all I got for today. So thank you all very, very much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.